So in this tutorial, I demonstrate how to uh, set up um, our toolchain for our computer graphics class that uh, uh, works uh, with the book OpenGL Super Bible uh, by Graham Sellers. And uh, Graham has put his code on uh, GitHub, and I have actually forked it from there to uh, make it C++ 11 compliant, and uh, 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 so that it compiles also with uh, MinGW. So, and so we're gonna. Clone this from my repository. So let's go to GitHub. And when they are search for my name and go to users. That's me. Go to repositories. And there you see is in the list SP7 code. And um, so this uh, uh, contains uh, the code that uh, is modified to compile with MGW. So um, let's clone this and uh, with HTTPS uh, right now. Uh, if you do have access to the class repo uh, via our own GitLab server, you could use that, of course, as well. Um, and so we have that. Let's go to source tree and clone this. So that's the uh, repo. And uh, we are uh, now ready to uh, configure this. So uh, Graham does use um, CMake with it. So uh, let's have a, a quick look at the uh, directory structure here. So I'm going to go to the file explorer. I'm going to go to the documents, and then we see the SP7 code. OK, so it's um, not a classic. CMake setup uh, in the sense that uh, it will result in an in-source build um, by default, uh, which has uh, yes set up. But uh, uh, CMake, of course, can do an out-of-source build, and uh, they uh, uh, it did will actually do it uh, via C line. So we're good on that. Um, but there is a external dependency that's uh, part of the repository, and that's in the external directory. So, and in the uh, external directory, uh, we see there are two versions of GLFW. Um, I, uh, um, Graham's original book uh, contained GLFW 3.0. Uh, I actually added in GLFW 3.2 as this makes it compatible with modern versions of macOS. So uh, let's use this and go in there. And uh, GLFW is a library that uh, uh, can uh, open and manage windows and uh, uh, receive a keyboard and mouse input. And uh, so because uh, OpenGL does nothing of that, so there's a very, very small wrapper library around uh, the OpenGL code that does that for us. So, and that's what GLFW is. Um, so as you can see, it is uh, uh, it does have a CMake list file, so we can actually uh, compile this. And we need this because we need the uh, GLFW library uh, and uh, uh, actually put this into a certain directory in the original SP7 code source tree. So uh, let's compile this first. So we bring up uh, C line. before we do the SP7 code, which this already defaults for. Let's do GLFW first. Thank you. 
texture and then GLFW 3.2.1. So this is configuring everything in the background. Our tool chain should be set up and ready to go with GLFW. So uh, once uh, CMake processing is done, we should be able to compile a uh, one of the example targets, which also will compile the library. So let's do this. So um, it's done configuring. We have a couple of targets here. Um, so uh, and uh, uh, many of these are just uh, examples. And uh, let's just go for the classic Boeing example, actually. That's a bouncy ball that uh, when the Commodore Amiga was uh, new, could render this in real time and uh, it blew everybody away at the time. So let's build this. Everything should work out of the box. And there we go. Okay, so uh, GLFW is built, so we are ready to roll on uh, that front. Um, and um, so CMake built it right here into CMake Build Debug as usual. And uh, the uh, library has been built in the source directory. And here is the static version of the library, libglfw 3.a, which is Unix convention. Um, in uh, Windows, this would theoretically be uh, .lib, but we're using the MinGW compiler, which is uh, Unix. So we can uh, right-click on this and copy that. And then go back to the SP7 code, our parent directory, and then go into the lib directory, because that's where the system um, expects uh, libglfw. So let's... Paste this here, and we have this. Um, we have built this in debug configuration, and the um, book actually expects everything to be built in debug configuration. Uh, and uh, the way Visual Studio, which is the original IDE, uh, handles this is uh, the uh, debug versions of the libraries get an underscore D suffix. So we're going to add this here underscore d because CMake is already configured to search for a file library file of this particular name uh, which is actually correct because we did compile it with debug information so and that's uh, uh, the setup of uh, glfw and now we can actually go and configure the actual um, sp7 code directory so let's do that to C9. So go back to C line. And uh, now open the SP7 code directory. With the toolshed set up, it should configure also right out of the box. So it's done configuring. And um, we have uh, all the examples in the book as uh, targets. Uh, let's do one of the earliest examples in the book, uh, which is the uh, single triangle. Um, so and that is right here, single try. And uh, let's just compile and run this. and. Everything works as expected. We should be seeing a triangle. And there we go. So, uh, basic operations is uh, done. Uh, one of the things that is still missing is um, 
textures and model files uh, uh, that uh, come with the book. And uh, this is a separate download. It's not part of the repository, as it shouldn't be, because these are large binary blobs. Um, so and uh, you can see here in the readme MD file that there is a uh, link to uh, the uh, download. So uh, we can actually uh, click on that link. And uh, save the file. And go to the enclosing folder. Okay, so here's the um, uh, the repository, the uh, uh, media file. Uh, it's a zip file. So uh, we can now go ahead and uh, actually uh, right click on it and say extract all files. So let's do that. And then the extraction directory is actually in our SP7 code uh, in the bin directory. This is where all the um, binaries will be uh, installed. So as I said, that's a somewhat non-traditional CMake setup, but uh, the binaries uh, 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 expect all the media they have to work with, all the uh, um, models and the textures and all that in uh, the media uh, directory here. So this is our extraction location. And we're just going to select this folder as our instruction location and then extract it. Okay, so, uh, and here is uh, everything's there, the shaders, the textures, the objects, everything that's needed is in this location. So we've installed the media pack, and uh, which means now we can actually try to uh, run one of the examples um, from the media pack, or one of the examples that depend on the media pack. And uh, let's do this. Um, so, and one that is... Uh, Kind of nice is uh, one here uh, that uses textures, which is uh, uh, one that actually does a little tunnel. And uh, so let's pick the tunnel example. And uh, when that compiles, it runs. Uh, well, it will certainly compile because the toolchain is fine. But if it actually runs and shows us a uh, tunnel with some brick walls, then uh, we know we have the textures and we are ready to go on that one as well. So the media pack is in the right location. And that's it. Um, so the uh, toolchain is installed, media pack is installed, and uh, we can now start uh, playing around with OpenGL.